My first pranam is to Bharat Mata, next to Hindu Dharma, and next to that, to this gathering of Hindu women from all over the globe, and to my brothers, one or two present here. This women conference in 2018 is the celebration of the progress made by Hindu women in last few years and especially after the conference in 2014. This is the last session of the conference and the structure of this session is slightly different from all previous sessions. There are no speeches except that of mine. In some earlier discussions, Sushri Ramaji has once said that this session is expected to be the cream of all earlier sessions. Madam, yes? Then I have thought, I have to churn all the sessions to get Navanita out of it. And then metaphorically, I thought the earlier five sessions are the five Upanishads. Economy 
is in simple words, is the management of all income and expenditure activities. According to me, it is a four-layered enterprise, beginning with household economy as the first layer, which is mostly under the women control. The second layer is that of economic activities in the business houses, where we find women mainly in SME, that is small and medium enterprises. Very few Hindu women are reaching to the third and fourth layer of national and international levels, but here we have met some illustrious ladies expert in these business houses. Somalatnaji, Chandrikaji and many other speakers too. That means we have to revitalize the calculative capacities of women. The universal principle in this modern era is Rashtrasya Moolam Arthaha which means economic prosperity is the source of strength of nations. It is observed that the nation's strength and prominence in the world affairs is directly proportional to the economic strength of the nation. All those forces that sustain and guard the prosperous strong nation require financial stability. It is opined that as the economy diversifies into new sectors like artificial intelligence and genetics, women are also entering a new era of change. And for that, yesterday, a seven-point charter, do you remember? A seven-point charter was given to us and we were supposed to follow them from yesterday only. Tony Rasmuttaji. <laughs> now, we learn new things, master new technology and break the barriers by entering domains that were previously not open to women. It is called financial literacy of women. Dr. Nandini Tandon opined that microfinancing serves as a primary source of funding for women in various parts of the world. It is a common belief that women, especially the Hindu women, are weak in financial matters. Sushri so Umar Reddiji, in the conference in 2014, had placed three challenges before us that women face on economic front. One, access to financing. Second, limited skill set. And the third, access to information. Today, while speaking on baking, sorry, breaking the glass ceiling, Sushri Meena Patel identified some reasons why women face difficulties in breaking this glass ceiling and spoke about the impact of globalization and differing social norms that inhibit the growth of women. Now, I think on this point, at the decision of demonetization, the nation has experienced the Indian woman's capacity of micro-micro savings. The grain containers in the kitchen where the secret money banks and from where crores of rupees were collected by the market banks. But only savings won't work for prosperous economy. The money must roll in the market. That is what we have to understand. And women have to acquire knowledge of financial transactions capital related matters and market access to. We have to be mentally prepared for risk taking in the money matters. That we are lacking 
because of certain traditions in us. But we can overcome these small things. We have to be mentally prepared in the same way we have to understand that successful male entrepreneurs have created wealth out of the business that they possess. But now, the women have to create business out of the wealth that they possess. Then she spoke also on angel investing and adaptability of Hindu women. I would like to add there that one important quality that a Hindu woman possesses is that she carries the values and culture wherever she may. And that is why she not only invests in coins, but she invests in kinds, the values and the culture too. And that is something great about Hindu women and Hindu entrepreneurs and business women too. So, it gives great satisfaction to her and the society is benefited with righteousness even in market policies. The second session was on Hindu women in education and was shared by Shrimati Anuradha Bhukhi. The women in general have the convincing capacity by nature, by education and by their communication skills. In addition to this, a Hindu woman possesses one more quality and that is the parental attitude towards, not only towards family but towards society. And because concept of Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam is running through her veins. That is why the number of lady teachers in India is more than gents teacher in the teaching field, especially at the initial stage of first 10 years of education of the child. The children are mostly influenced by their mothers in their initial years and the mother should be capable of imparting value-based education from the childhood. Today, because of many reasons, mothers are unable to perform their role as the first to room. Most of the mothers are working women and don't have time to spend with their children. Secondly, because of the nuclear family, there is no help from additional hands like grandparents or even brothers and sisters. The number of children in the family itself is restricted to one or two and consequently there is no sense of sharing, no adjustment and ample availability of all pleasing objects for a single child has caused the loss of control over mind of mother and of the child too. Thus, the mothers are to be trained first. So, Shri Nivedita Ji focused on the responsibility of men and women both to have work as the ambassadors of Hindu culture. We are losing the noble Hindu samskaras which we have kept, which have kept the Hindu culture alive even against the vehement attacks of foreign invaders for centuries together. And it is because of the neglect of value-based education that was imparted to the generations earlier. Dr. Meena Ji Chandavarkar spoke, reviewed the past, commented on the present by keeping eye on the future. Civilizations which do not value education are susceptible to decay and deterioration. For Hindu civilization to remain robust, it must develop an inspired and viable system of education so that it can prosper and endure. Dr. Meenaji also showed 
how the syllabus can be changed. It was her own experience. The educational policy, according to me, must reflect in itself the goal of the nation as a whole. When the Westerners have their own goals, they have designed the educational policy as they wanted to fulfill the goals. At least now it is our turn. If our aim is that of universal brotherhood and to feel the world with nobility, Krunavanto Vishwamaryam, then we have to revisit our syllabus and examine what we are teaching to our children. I will give an example. In one of the lectures, Dr. Satyapal Singh, you must have heard and listened to him, has given an example how our syllabus is sowing the seeds of division between the two members of the same family or the events in the nature. See, there is a topic about Viloma verse, that is, that is teaching opposites. In schools, there is one question in the paper also, give the opposites. The examples he gives is, mother, opposite is father. Stri, opposite is Purusha. Brother, opposite is sister. Guru, opposite to Ishish. Malak, opposite to Mukha. Then, the cordial relations between the pairs of the same family members are surely at way. See, we will think about it. It is not necessary. That it is not necessary that we should agree with each and every point that somebody possesses. But you know, our dharma has also taught us ano bhadra kratavo yantu vishvata. Let the good thoughts, noble thoughts come to us from all the corners of the world. We will think about it. If we agree to it, if we find them really noble, we will accept it. So, this is what we thought. Then, if from the childhood itself, if a person is taught that Guru and Shishya are the words against each other, then the soul of education is lost. And unfortunately, we are witnessing the same happening in various universities now. I have undergone this ordeal too. So, I think that point is to be noted and considered. Now, the second point he brought out is that the education must facilitate positive thinking. See, we read in the newspapers that there is hike in price of petrol. The first reaction of the reader is that that the sailors and pump managers are looting the customers. We do not know the various reasons for the hike, but we react in such a way that all the people related with price hike are robbing me and I am the only innocent person being robbed. Now, we have to think this kind of negative mindset and we have to teach our children how to think positively about everything. Same way, if a teacher punishes the student, the parents nowadays complain against him publicly without knowing what the wrong our child has done. So I say it is necessary to change the mindset. Such behavior of parents and other teachers spoils the child as he starts thinking that the society is against him and he has to revolt and revenge to this society. Actually, the education is the tool of personality building. Thus, we have to be very careful while policy making and syllabus training. In the 70s, 
same session, Dr. Vindavyasini spoke about preserving Hindu identity in every activity of the day. That is our attire, our speech, our conduct. And she narrated her experiences in Ghana too. The third session was on the media and art, which was chaired by Anupama Koske. The session focused on all the different ways in which media and the arts can be used to empower Hindu women and showcase values of Hindu dharma and Hindu womanhood in positive way. We have to become savvy in various techniques and devices of media and arts to promote a healthy vision of women's issues and meaning of womanhood and to disseminate the timeless values and principles related to them. We have new tools like WhatsApp messages, messages, Facebook, Twitter, etc. These have haunted human <laughs> mind all over the world. Why? We have to master them for our purpose. The print media and electronic media are two main tools that we have to concentrate on. Rasita Vishnu underlined this point and same way Sushri Yashikaji spoke about the opportunities and challenges. She started from indenture labor and ended with the heartfelt feeling of oneness all over the world. About these devices, I want to say one more thing. These use of devices must be careful and wise to spread the values and samskaras. It definitely requires novelty and creativity, but we have to find out experts and instead of being just forwarding member, be the admin of at least one group and be the producer of new ideas. Keep continuity, plan for at least six months and then start to make it a movement. The society is averting from words. We don't want to write, but we talk a lot. We don't want to read the books, but we prefer to watch the movies. Instead of complaining about this attitude, we have to learn to use positive. The word art encompasses the extensive area as music, painting, performing arts, mimicry, the puppets, and everything. Now, the prayer here appeared with her vahana and spoke about the portrayal of women in media. She mentioned many, Jasi Kirani, Mary Home, all our ideals and idols. We can make good use of all these things. Keep one thing in mind, the values are not the rubber stamps to be sealed on the forehead of the child, but they are the vaccinations to protect him against the diseases of immorality, dishonesty, and all other bad habits all through the life. Thus, those must be measured, accurate, and slowly injected. The fourth station was on the role of Hindu women in shaping the society and the chair was Srimadhi Alkari Namkar. Amruta Taylor focused on positive parenting, bringing up the child in non-conducive environment is a challenge for the new generation of mothers and still they have to shape the society by shaping their own child. Shaping does not mean only restrained, constrained and disciplined life. No. The child must learn to enjoy life without transgressing the laws of dharma and artha. He has to behave righteously and enjoy not by robbing anybody for his pleasure. With these two principles, the child will be happy and he will make others happy too. Yogini Shantabi, as her name goes, 
spoke about yoga shakti and also about dharmic approach of nurturing. Train your children in such a way that all their activities, even the material pleasures, will have the shining line of faith in God, respect for elders in God, and confidence in themselves. These are not the new thoughts, but we have driven them out for our Western materialism. One has to be very patient and has to be tolerant because shaping needs cutting by a chisel and it certainly hurts the object so we have to be very careful about it. Professor Madhupur spoke about socio-cultural issues and challenges. She threw light on the negative propaganda, spoke with her and pointed out the absurdities Alka Inandarji has explained something about Ashtabhuja of Hindu women coming from the goddess Ashtabhuja. And I would like to carry forward this concept just by observing from yesterday our volunteers running here and there with pen, paper, purse, Pallu, these are their four hands. <laughs> then, mobile. Then, when they are coming out of house, one hand to hold the finger of the child who is towards kinder care. The one when she, she will enter in the kitchen, the cooking ladle in one hand. And the eighth hand for the weapon that is the watchfulness for self-protection. And that is why she is Annapurna, Saraswati, Lakshmi, Durga, etc. And the prayer goes, Devi, Ashtamja, Namo, Saraswati, Lakshmi, Namo, Parvati, Buddhi, Vaibhava, Shakti, Tu, Bhagavati, Tu, Ashtadha, Prakriti. So, my pranamas to such ladies, who are fighting for their everyday life with their eight hands. The fifth session was in continuation of the fourth one and the topic was inspiring women. It was shared by Chaya Nanjarpa and it was a dialogue with inspiring women, their stories, inspirations and their struggle on the way of success. They, they themselves were inspiring women because they have stood above the situation, performing their normal duties, they have achieved something more in their own fields of interest. They have transported themselves to the higher regions, not only of spiritual, but the space religions too. Thus, they could work for themselves and giving inspiration to the society too. Some of them have mastered the techniques and skills in sports. Some are successful politicians and some of them are social workers by excellence. Some are honored, some are not. Some are respected, some are insulted too. But they did not count praise or abuse. They are just walking on the path they have selected. And so, what are the qualities of them? Eka Nishtha, Eka Sattva Kartula, Kashta Sadhya, Dushta Vadhya, Yasha Siddha, Purta. We are coming to the last session. I told you that the structure of this session is slightly different. And I was the only person to speak. So, I took the liberty to speak about the earlier sessions. But now, coming to this my session, it was about networking of resourceful Hindu women across the globe. Here is the group discussion. To identify our potentials, 
to decide the action plan and to come to a definite conclusion and it is also on the global perspective. We do many activities in India, but here is the gathering, the global Hindu women gathering. So, we have to think that out of India also, there is a very big Hindu community who is, who is striving hard, facing problems and still is here to listen to what they can do and how this conference can inspire them. So now Saiji, it is up to you to carry forward this session with group discussions. My comments on this session I have kept reserved. Once our book group discussions are finished, I will come again for 10 minutes to you and we will explain what we are doing and what we are going to do. Thank you so much. I think you have to appreciate how much efforts and patience she had to go through each and every session, listen to it patiently and write it down. None of us have done that, I'm sure. So thank you for that. So this is a little different format as she mentioned. We are going to divide ourselves into four groups. Each group will discuss about what what they think can be done in under that uh, particular umbrella. For example, we have economy, we have education, we have role of women or social issues, and we have art and media. So we will divide ourselves accordingly. We will have the speakers who spoke in that particular session present in the group discussion. We will have four moderators moderating that session, and whatever discussion happens, if some action items, concrete action items come out, they will be recorded and then the moderators will come and uh, share those action items with all of us. After that, as you much said, then she will conclude uh, about what the solution is from this conference. Does that make sense to everybody? <coughs> Great. So I had a, an idea of dividing everybody randomly so that not just economy gets 20 people and education gets only one. That was the idea. But in the interest of time, I will trust your, uh, you know, honesty and I will hope that you will go to different sessions making sure that we are dividing ourselves equally. Uh, so what we will do is we will start with economy. The session will be uh, moderated by Shilpa Chelaji. Shilpa Ji, can you just come up there. So after we, uh, I explain everything, we will get up and divide ourselves into four sessions. Uh, if I see too many people in one session, I take the liberty to move you. Please don't mind that. So because we want representation of as many people as possible in each session. So Shilpa Ji is a chartered accountant herself and uh, is a partner in the accounting firm in UK and also a Sanvikari Karta. The second session will be moderated, which is an uh, education session by Jaya Asmanaji. Jayaji? Jayaji is right there. We had uh, Jayaji's uh, uh, discussion also. She is a VHPA Karyakarta and passionate about education, especially children education. Then the third one, we will have uh, social issues or social uh, impact of women in social uh, issues. And uh, Yashastini Desaiji will chair that, uh, will moderate that session. Uh, she is also a volunteer in Ekal Vidyalay, a local in Chicago, and is an executive board member of Walgreens, uh, in Walgreens Asian Network. Uh, the last one will be media and art, will be moderated by Sabita ji and Manga ji. And we will, uh, they, that will be the last session at the end. Uh, Manga ji is a senior advisor, political uh, outreach for American Hindu coalition of the USA. Uh, so I would request after, uh, uh, since I have uh, explained where to go, please feel free to get up, uh, get uh, gather around the uh, easel board and we can start the discussion. I request all the speakers to go to those respective sessions, speaker and chairs of course. And uh, 
those who are involved in the uh, role of women will go to uh, try to go to the social issues and the inspiring women speakers could uh, you know take liberty to go wherever they they would like to go thank you
So the short term is Hindu women, business, the business directory, networking, and, and Hindu women, normal, business directory, for okay? Support, education, all, uh, financial and education for all Hindu women. Financial planning and management of every Hindu home must be and women must be involved. Absolutely. Uh, in the long term, the long term policy is to create a women, long women finance forum, annual forum, newsletter, celebrate success stories, sharing our knowledge. And financial resources for sale. So we need to create a global Hindu financial world where women are involved. So it's a rising and mentoring program. So it's a huge task ahead of us, and I'm sure we'll be successful. Thank you so much. get everybody's input and also come up with some concrete action items. Even though we could not list everything here, we do have them. So it will be compiled, it will be uh, you know used properly. Now I'll request our uh, uh, Dr. Uma Vaidyaji to conclude this session and uh, uh, after that we can discuss.
keeping ardent faith in our duties and in our way forward, we will march ahead. As the second part of it, the second part of action plan, we will try to make a directory of efficient and influential Hindu women to whom we can call to help us in our groups or the small groups. So, we have the list of eminent uh, women here only, but that is not sufficient. See, we have to travel all over the globe. And so, those who are efficient in these media matters and everything, they can help to make such kind of directories. And then the goal, which is represented in the prayer of Rashtra Sevika Samiti, that is Sushila, Sudhira, Samartha, Sameta, etc. You all know that, that will be fulfilled. Friends, I have started with Gita and I will conclude also with Gita. At the end of the 18th chapter, Arjuna said, Nashto Moha Smritir Labdha. So the delusion I have in mind is now removed. And what is the final? Karishe Vachanam Tavo. O Lord, I will follow you. I will act you, act as guided by you. I think whatever inspiration we have got here, what are our action plans, we also can promise to our Bharat Mata and Hindu philosophy that don't worry, we are here and Karishya Yochanam we will do what you want us to do. <laughs>